Hey, how's it going, everyone? Um, pretty excited, you know. Really good day. I feel really grateful. I got a job as a developer, so I'm not saying with what company or what I'm doing, but maybe later. I don't know how much information I want to reveal in a vlog about, you know, my experience, you know, looking for a job, but I was interviewing at a couple. Uh, different places and I'm getting down towards the end of the code boot camp so it's time to start looking for that stuff and it, it went really well I'm really excited about this company and you know maybe as time progresses I'll share a little bit more information about that but you know, good news I'm at home today because yeah you know, it was really busy lunch didn't have time to do a usual recording there but nonetheless pretty excited I had a really busy weekend this weekend uh I was just I, I really like One Lone Coder's uh, game engine, so I actually took it and I started writing it by hand. And I can show you the results of what I did with that because it it's one thing to like look at code and then just say, oh, I get it, or just copy and paste or whatever. You know, like you're, I think for me as a beginner, I say beginner, I'm actually pretty deep into it now though at this point. I, I just think that for me, I know my learning style is I uh, even when it came to physics and math, I had to write out every equation, even if like it was just the derivation. I would try to do the derivation on my own. You know, sometimes I would get it, sometimes I fail. And then I would just immediately, you know, look up the solution and like, you know, see what was going on. But I don't know if that's the best way to do math, because I found out later on in undergrad that if you like immediately go look up the solution, then you kind of like cheat yourself so i would kind of i would read over everything kind of make this mental map of what i need to do and then then approach it and then try and you know do something uh to solve the problem and so i kind of taken that approach to coding i really tried for a long time to just be able to work with this game engine and not have to look into it but you know being physicist by nature i had to investigate what's going on so we'll take a look into into this game engine here it's it's very beautiful code i will say that it's very very uh very beautiful code and it involves the windows api which is something that me as a c plus plus programmer i should have a very good knowledge of but you you only use parts of the api when you really need to do stuff so this is the game engine it starts out up here let's look at this this is really cool look at how the the console so these are the console colors and look at how they change they're hexadec hexadecimal and they change by uh whatever this this place is in the hexadecimal but the la the last bit the least significant bit is what changes so it's pretty cool you know i got to learn that and i wrote all these by hand some people probably wouldn't do that because they think it's useless but i, I learned a lot i remember i had to remember my hexadecimal counting from uh zero to 15 so i had to learn that again i had to remember all that stuff and then we also have some character types that are really interesting so these are the hexadecimal representations of character types this is a bunch of sprite stuff um not i haven't used this yet so i'm not really going to explain too much of what i would use that type of stuff for um yeah, this is all sprite stuff, more sprite stuff. Really cool uh, file operations here. If you are interested in working with files, C++ is a wonderful language for that. You can, you know, open up, if you have Windows, I don't know how that would look. Uh, I don't know how that would, I don't know how that would work for other, other, um, sorry, someone just sent me a message. I don't know how that would work for other platforms, but um, you know, for me, it's really, it's really C++ is the thing I use to work with files. This is the exciting part. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. This is so amazing. So there's a, I, there's a, there's a check for the, uh, handle value, which comes from the Windows API. So this is, we're jumping into the Windows API right here and we're looking for the console handle. And if, uh, a, uh, MH this this is Hungarian notation, so it's a member of a type handle console, and um, that's what that's doing. 
and then we're setting the screen width, screen height, and making a establishing a rectangular window, and uh, building a buffer, and setting console font, and uh, copy windows, copy string, windows string copy, uh, console us. Um, yeah, so this is like just basically setting up the console for us, right? This is this is helping us get the console configured in the way that we want. This is a drawing routine, very useful. I didn't really know how to use this drawing routine in the beginning. I was trying to just make some test programs to fill in some pixels. And this is a one-dimensional uh, coordinate. This is one-dimensional, this is a buffer and it's 1D and it takes, you can take 2D coordinates and put them into 1D and you can uh, store them in the buffer here. And um, yeah, so each one of these, you pass in a, a char, a char type here, and that's what's going to be put into the buffer for the character attributes. That's the color. That's the pixel color we're going to be putting in here. And if you have time to go through this, I really recommend it. Definitely check it out and uh, you know try and understand what's going on in this code. This threading, this threading uh, stuff over here was was quite a challenge to understand. I'm, I'm still trying to understand actually, but. We basically got these two timestamps that start and while the thread is active, we're gonna do this check here and we're gonna start timestamp uh, two and timestamp one and we're gonna look at the elapsed time and we're gonna go through here, we're gonna be checking for input, seeing if there's any input, seeing if there's any input, seeing if there's any, any input. And then we're looking for some mouse inputs here. Uh, focus event, I thought that was kind of cool because if you know JavaScript uh, or HTML, there's things called focus events as well, and that happens in the browser. Here we're just looking at the Windows API. Thought that was interesting that those two things overlap. Um, haven't messed with any of that stuff yet. Haven't messed with input. And uh, here we're just configuring the console game engine, setting a title on it, and recording the frames per second. And then we have our over our functions that we're going to override. So what what does this mean? This means that we're going to have this function on user create, and we're going to put all of our game logic in there for the initial startup of the game, and then on user update, which takes in the elapsed time. So as the time progresses in the game, this is where we put that logic in here. And then if you want to do something when you hit close on the game, when you close the actual game, you can do something like that. Um, okay, and yeah, pretty much here's all the member variables down here. So what I did is I just made a block of pixels because what I want to do, the reason I did this is I wanted to come up with something to be able to draw algorithms and show some algorithms. So this is all this is all it does right now. To me, to me that's really impressive, and so. Um, I know a lot of people will look at that and they'd be like, oh, that's useless. But this is this is the part this is the part of me where I kind of like say this is why it's important to start with the basics. Now I know how to draw things. Now I know how to draw things. It's just one more step away from taking any algorithm, Knights Tour, Knapsack, whatever, any of those algorithms. Now it's up to me. Here's the thing, it's not doing a big fancy algorithm right now because I just want a base template for being able to draw things. And I found out that typing out the game engine on my own, I don't need any of the audio stuff. There was tons of other things that I could have added in here. There's a whole drawing triangle routine, drawing circles routine, all these little routines that I don't I don't really need. And um, it's not that I, they're bad, it's just I don't need them. And when you write programs that are understandable, all people are gonna see in this program now is there's a, there's a drawing routine, a filling routine, and a thing that launches a game. That's it. Very simple. And now I can use this in any of my algorithm programs. And that's what I'm going to be working on this week, trying to add those things. Um, I think last time I actually started showing you guys some stuff that I was working on, a video player, which I got working and I'm so excited to, uh, I, I, I want to open it up. This is kind of a cowboy moment because I don't know if it'll work since I'm recording. I'm doing a screen recording here, but I'm gonna try and open up this project. Uh, so we'll go back here, go on to my C drive, and then go into programming. And I will say, you know, I think 
I think the fact that I did have a YouTube channel probably helped me in my situation trying to find employment. I know that a lot of the people I was talking to were looking at my GitHub and they were looking at um, my YouTube channel and stuff and they were seeing what I'm doing and like they could tell like I'm, I'm just excited about programming. I like this stuff. It's cool. And I think if you can convey that to a future employer, they know that you're not just going to be someone who comes in and just checks out because I really don't like that type of mindset. It's kind of boring. Like, you know, you want to disappear in the back. I'm trying to see right now, this is the, this is the webcam. This is the webcam application. And I'm trying to find this part where a scopy, uh, in it capture one. I don't know if this is going to work. Dang it. The thing is, it's using my front camera and there's a way to tell it to you. It just uses my front camera by default and I never really had to figure out how to get it to do it without that. So let's go in here and then let's go to Microsoft camera. Nope. Let's see if we can turn this off. So delete. Okay, remove. Microsoft camera, remove. Okay, the camera's off. All right, I think it's gonna work now. All right, so if I start that, come on, do it. Hey, what's up? It's me, it's Pix11. <laughs> so I thought this was kind of cool and what I'm trying to do is come up with my own classification algorithm so that I can possibly improve the setting of this right now because the Q saturation it makes for some cool pixel art like this looks like a cool like 1980s pixel art look like Duke Nukem or something but uh I don't know I'm trying to figure out how to, how to improve this and uh I think that maybe uh filtering it just seems like there's such a limited amount i i think that the trick is getting a larger color span i think that's the thing limited to just such a limited range of color of hue saturate uh hue saturation and uh variance right now so i think i need to improve that and then it'll look cool but in the meantime it looks it look it looks kind of nice so but yeah that's uh this is pretty much what i've been up to i was working on these one lone coder things uh, this one lone coder project and um, you know, always trying to improve my knowledge of algorithms and data structures. I just, I just, I found that that's helped me, um, think more concretely about projects, having like that intuition for algorithms and data structures. So that's something I've been doing. I got introduced, I got introduced to a really cool thing today called Code Wars. If you haven't checked out Code Wars, it's pretty cool. I mean, there's tons of challenges for C, C++. I'm not sponsored by them in any way. I just tried, I just checked it out and I thought it was kind of cool. But, um, yeah, that's uh, that's a really cool thing to, to check out. Our code bootcamp instructor definitely said, you know, check that out. That's gonna be it today, everyone. Have a good rest of the day.